Okay, we've reached the body image section of the video. I know I'm gonna, oh, try not to drone on about this because I could talk about it all day. I do have a video specifically on body image. So if you're interested in conversations like this, I'll link that right here in a card. So I wanna go back to this person's original comment. Basically, they're just afraid that they're going to lose all the hard work that they've put in over the past couple of years. And I think that fear is completely valid and completely common. There is no getting around the fact that pregnancy changes your body and postpartum changes your body. Not to be the most like negative person or tell you something really negative in this moment in time, but you are, once you're postpartum, you're always postpartum. You are a postpartum person. You've had a baby, you've gone through the process of pregnancy and birthing a human. There are some things that are gonna be different. Hopefully you guys are familiar with my content. If you're not, I've been strength training for a long time. And when I started focusing on performance and strength, my body image shifted entirely, completely rocked my world and also completely changed the control that I had over my aesthetics. So for both how I looked and both how I viewed my body, Strength training and focusing on performance changed those things entirely for the better. My physique goals have always taken a backseat to any performance goals that I've had. This, one, makes the gym more fun. It makes training more fun. It makes my goals more exciting. And also, it reminds me or it releases that attachment that I have to how my body looks. Because now, my value system, performance, is way more important than aesthetics. And that is very freeing. That is something that I hope you watching this can start to feel. This person sounds like a weightlifter. They are a weightlifter and they've probably kind of gotten to that point to where they do prioritize performance. Next, I want you to focus on beauty ideals. And I want you to really think about where whatever beauty ideals you have, where they come from, and then compare those to what moms look like in your life. So the moms that you really know, the people in your family, your friends who are mothers or who went through pregnancy and childbirth, how do they look? And then how does that compare to the standard that you hold yourself to? Perhaps are you holding yourself to a standard that you see on social media, that you see on TV? Um, that Are you holding yourself to a beauty ideal that literally most people in your real life are not meeting? Is it? A possibility that some of these beauty ideals and how you think your body should look is it a possibility that that is impossible or it could be impossible I don't want this to come off as sounding like negative but I just want you to do some work and like think about where does this come from where does this idea come from that when I have a baby I need to look like I never had a baby when I'm 40 I need to look like I'm 30 or 20 you know when I you know go through pregnancy and become postpartum I need to still look I need to still have these abs yes it has a lot to do with the work that you've put in but also you know realize that your body is going to change and shift and mold and that hopefully is something that you're willing to trade off when you're truly ready to have a kid with this conversation thinking about these beauty ideals also consider where those ideals come from. Are they from people who are selling you things? Are those beauty ideals from supplement companies? As someone who has a supplement company, think about this. <laughs> are they coming from supplement companies? Are they coming from influencers who are selling you a program? Yes, I offer all those things. So reconsider what you're listening to me say at other tones of voice, okay? <laughs> so think about that. Who is winning from you feeling this way? Is it you? Are you winning from feeling like you need to keep up how you look 10 years down the line, one kid down the line, two kid down, kids down the line? Just dig deep. I know it's like that can be a hard conversation to have with yourself, but think about it. In regards to body image, there are also a couple of other things that you can just proactively do. The next one is to stop talking shit about yourself, stop talking shit about other people and how they look. That should be self-explanatory. Another good idea is to revisit who you follow on social media. Find people who have diverse bodies, diversity elsewhere. Find people who do different things than you, who move their bodies in different ways, and ditch people who are really dogmatic and say like, this is the only way, this is how you do it, ditch the dogma. Now, with this, 
realize that like wanting to look a certain way isn't a bad thing. Being curious about how you can change your body, how you can maintain the appearance that you have is not a bad thing. But whenever that becomes an obsession, whenever that rules your life, whenever that prevents you from doing something that you might really want to do, that's when it starts impeding in who you are. It starts taking over your life in a way that can be detrimental. So there's a balance. I think, you know, completely not caring about how you look is one end of the spectrum and then caring way too much is the other. And I feel like there is a happy middle where you're taking pride in how you look, you're taking control of your health and you're taking initiative to be your best self. And then there's the other side of the spectrum. So there is a balance. There's a lot of questions in the same train of thought here. Somebody asks, what's your experience with balancing the expectation to bounce back? I hope that I kind of covered that. I feel like my emphasis on performance definitely outweighs the emphasis on aesthetics. And I really just gave myself time. I gave myself time before I even thought, oh, okay, I'm nine months postpartum, like I should be looking normal. No, I feel like my body's constantly changing my body's still changing and that is just something that i expected and i expect my body to continue to change as i live my life it's legitimately 109 degrees and it's going to be 108 tomorrow so there's that anyway i'm in the gym training trying to get what i can for my training session it's all about flexibility it's all about flexibility i hope this video doesn't be me coming off as negative i just want to be honest with my experience and helpful because it's worth it. I feel like you don't understand that when people say, oh, it's worth it. It's worth all the sacrifice of the trade-offs. I, I feel like you don't get it until you, until you get it. Life is so much better now. A hundred million times better. A lot of the concerns that I had prior to having a baby, like they kind of melt away or they're just not that important. Anyway, okay, that's probably not gonna be helpful. <laughs> I feel like this video is getting long, so rapid fire, let's talk about training. Lots of specific training questions. So to give you guys context, I ran my plus one pregnancy prenatal program. I ran that all throughout my entire pregnancy. It's the program that I ran. I got a certification in pre and postpartum training. So I am a CPPC, so I'm a certified pre and postpartum coach. So I got that did lots of studying prior to conceiving, and then I started writing my program while I was quietly going through my first trimester. Hey guys, are you pregnant? Are you trying to get pregnant? Are you postpartum? Probably because you're watching this video, I just wanna pop in real quick and remind you guys that I do have a prenatal and a postpartum program. It's called Plus One. Definitely check it out. I'm gonna give you a lot of education in this video and have a lot of free education here on YouTube and on my Instagram. Check out all those resources before you join any program. I am a certified pre and postnatal coach. So I'm certified to coach those of you who are preggy. So I made a program so that it's affordable because um, I know it's a crazy time in your life. So I combined the education that I think is required to continue strength training and the actual strength program. So we guide you through the entire pregnancy, even in the trying to conceive phase and of course postpartum and give you the tools that you need so that you can train, but also train really confidently because I know it can be you know, you're inundated with so much information. It can be really confusing time. It can feel like you don't have time to do any training, um, but we try to put everything in one place so that you can train confidently. Check it out, plus one, I'll link it down below. Just to give you context, I'm not only coming from the perspective of someone who has had a baby, but also as a certified coach. So how long after birth did you wait to start exercising? At two weeks, I started doing very, very gentle, prone movements. I'm lying down on the ground and doing some very, very basic stretching. This movement that I was doing was an opportunity for me to set aside some time to move my body. None of the movement was any more strenuous than walking around the house or taking care of baby. This, these are not things that I would suggest if you are obviously on bed rest postpartum, but they were no impact. So weeks two to six was prone movement. I started to do some upright movement around week four. So that is like, again, very low impact, like quarter squats, like no more strenuous than literally getting up off the toilet. 
after week six of pregnancy, then I started transitioning into more upright movement. And then slowly through weeks six to 18, I started to add some resistance. I would say I didn't start adding resistance until 12 weeks postpartum. And then I slowly started progressing. I feel like even now I'm starting to continue to progress more and more, but I'd say basically I'm about back where I was strength wise. And that's considering the fact that I'm not really pushing my strength because I'm focused on this new army challenge that I'm doing. So someone says, I'm a power lifter. I wonder about using a belt working out while pregnant. Now your breath control and managing intra-abdominal pressure is probably the biggest change that you could make, especially if you're someone who is actively trying to increase pressure in your abdomen. Instead of holding our breath and using the Valsalva maneuver, whenever pregnancy is progressing, we want to continue to breathe throughout exercise. We want to manage the pressure instead of having it spike. I'm going to breathe in on the descent of my squat and then breathe out on the exertion portion of my squat. So on the way up, when I'm exerting, I'm breathing out. And when I breathe out, I'm gonna pull up on the pelvic floor. So no more holding the breath, increasing pressure here, possibly pushing down on the already taxed pelvic floor. No more of that. We're going to let that pressure out and pull up on the pelvic floor. That's to avoid stress urinary incontinence. That's to avoid putting pressure on that pelvic floor, which is already getting some pressure on it as pregnancy progresses. How long to wait postpartum to return to Valsalva breathing? This is gonna depend on you. This is gonna depend on how you're healing and it's going to be very individualized. So if you have pelvic floor dysfunction post-pregnancy, which it's gonna take some time to heal, like months to heal, then you're just gonna to wanna to go by feel. You can feel that heaviness. So it's kind of like a feeling of heaviness when you're tired after a workout or just generally after pregnancy or after childbirth, you're gonna feel this heaviness. And I can still feel it some days when I'm more tired or some days when I've had like a hard workout or maybe I didn't properly manage my pelvic floor, the workout prior, I'll feel a heaviness and that's when I know I need to back off a little bit. Now that rarely happens now after being one year postpartum, but earlier, six months postpartum, I could feel that every once in a while. So it's something you're gonna need to keep an eye on and it's something that you're gonna have to kind of weigh your personal healing and kind of consider whether or not you are healed enough and feeling fit enough in your pelvic floor to introduce that Valsalva, to introduce those maneuvers that will increase intra-abdominal pressure. There's a question about prolapse and pelvic floor. Would love to hear more on bracing postpartum, especially with pelvic floor dysfunction. The Valsalva and bracing, holding the lift, bracing your core, that is something that you're going to want to avoid. Also, as pregnancy progresses, you're gonna be lifting less and less weight as you get more and more pregnant. I mean, that might depend. Probably you can push your bench. Probably you can push some overhead movements, but generally you're not going to want to really push your exertion really, really late in pregnancy. That's not to say you can't lift heavy. That's just saying you're probably not gonna PR in pregnancy. It's just not the time to do it. What are your go-to core movements prior to lifting? Honestly, that TVA engagement. So in order to do that, I'm going to engage my corset muscles that I talked about. One way to do that is sinking it with the breath and on the exhale, you're going to make this sound. When you make that forced exhale, you're going to think about wrapping your TVA, bringing the belly button back and up. So it's kind of similar to a vacuum exercise, but a little bit different because we're focused on engaging the TVA. Try that, you should feel it with that forced exhale sound, like force it against your teeth. You should start to feel that core engage. TVA and those TVA holds, a TVA hold and something called like an ab wrap waterfall, those are gonna be good for movements to help bring those abs back together and help train that engagement during exercise. So that's a great warm up. Oh, this is a big question. Did you work out while sleep deprived? No, I always prioritize sleep over workouts. It's just early on um, and like during some months where sleep, her sleep was a little like 
on more unpredictable it's still unpredictable now but a little bit more unpredictable i always prioritize sleep so if i didn't get like six hours six to eight hours i would most likely skip one of those early morning workouts if i had that planned now i have more of a rhythm where i'm able to work out three days during the week and then i kind of have to squeeze in a monday or a friday workout if i can I am happy if I get three strength training workouts in a week. Okay, everyone in the neighborhood is doing their lawn care today, but that's fine uh, if you guys can ignore it. The last category in this video was on nutrition. I had so many questions about milk supply and making the decision to diet and how that affects your milk supply if you're nursing. I will say, me, I cut down to about two feeds for her because she was eating so much food around eight to nine months. So I still feed her in the morning and I still feed her at night. So still even almost coming up on 13 months postpartum, I'm nursing twice a day. I told myself I was gonna try to make it to one year and I have done that, but I would say everyone's gonna be different. For me, I never once focused on cutting my calories and I've still been able to manage weight loss. Again, that goes back to setting those process goals, setting more habit-based goals and setting more habit-based approach to making changes to my nutrition rather than focusing on eating a certain amount of calories or losing a certain amount of weight. I just kind of cleaned up my habits, did this thing called reeling it in and took a common sense approach, AKA more protein, more vegetables, less fast food, less junk. So that common sense approach has kind of resulted in some positive benefits. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> some positive benefits as far as losing weight. I did notice maybe once or twice that my milk supply, just based on how my boobs felt, <laughs> um, was affected by certain days where I didn't eat much, but I do strictly nurse, so I'm not pumping or anything. So I have no way of truly telling how much milk is she's getting but luckily she's eating a full three meals three or four meals at the dinner table or at the table like of regular food all that to say i haven't really experienced much of a milk loss at least noticeably but i know a lot of people come to this crossroads where they're thinking about switching to formula or thinking about weaning their baby off in order to reach their health and fitness goals and i think 100 percent you're in charge of that like it's your body formula is an option babies can eat real food after a certain age. Obviously you wanna follow what your pediatrician suggests in regards to this and making sure that your baby is fed, but it's up to you. Like I think sometimes people shame others for wanting to not breastfeed at all or not nurse at all or cut nursing at a certain point because of their own personal goals and i think you need to take care of you and there are other options out there for your baby should you have access to formula and should your baby have other options so obviously feed your baby but there's multiple ways to do that nutrition wise that's the only thing that i have to say about nutrition is i just took that kind of process goal approach common sense approach <laughs> Mmm, blackberry. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, after that windstorm, I'm ready to close out the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. I feel like there's so much to discuss on this topic, and I really want to stress that, you know, your body is going to experience change regardless of if you go through pregnancy and childbirth or not. You will age you will get older, things will happen. <laughs> you, you know, lots of things happen as we grow and as we age and hopefully as we build our families. I mean, hopefully if that's what you want. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I feel very, in a sense, lucky to look the way I do. But also that comes with working hard, <laughs> um, working out a lot during pregnancy, before pregnancy, and after pregnancy. It also comes with having some knowledge around nutrition, having a lot of good habits that support sometimes weight loss, sometimes fat loss, a lot of times building muscle. And also, above all, I'm most thankful that I have 
my perspective on my own body and I understand that it's not the most important thing about me, especially not now. It wasn't before Emerald and it definitely isn't after her. There are so many beautiful things in life and I feel really blessed to have the people in my life that I do and I feel really blessed to be able to experience the things that I get to experience. Life is good despite all the crazy shit that happens and goes on in life and how my body looks luckily at this point in my life does not factor in to my happiness and it doesn't factor in other people's happiness and that is something that i've worked on through my own internal body image like work that i've done over the past 10 years and i've shared a lot of that on this channel so hopefully you know I want the message to be, yes, you can work hard and you can do certain things to control how your body looks after pregnancy. Um, that's not to say you can do everything. There are some things that will be out of your control. However, how you view your own body and how you manage your expectations for pregnancy and for after pregnancy and for your life is 100% up to you. And I just wanna stress that that is so much more important than how you look. Even just reading that person's message, like the mental shift that I think you would benefit from is huge. And yeah, it's cool to look back and see your body 10, 20 years ago, but there are so many other cool things you can do with your life. Parenthood is just one of them. Okay, and it doesn't have to be the thing that you do. So whether or not you, this person decides to get pregnant and have a baby or not, I hope that you can embrace changes that your body will go through, even if they don't meet the expectations that you may have once had for your own body, because those can change. Okay, have I rambled enough? Hopefully this video was coherent. Again, I'm doubting myself because this is such a serious topic and kind of can be a touchy one for many people. So I hopefully I wasn't too harsh. Hopefully I wasn't too negative. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if I need to make more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.